Glory to his name. so good to be in the house of the Lord one more time and see so many of you out with us today to give God praise and glory for all that he's done in our lives. 
I see some faces that I hadn't seen in a while. I'm good. It's good to see you. God bless you for being here with us. And we want to come this morning to worship God in spirit and in truth. We want to praise him for keeping us this past week and all the days of our lives. So this morning, let's go to him in prayer. Father, it's once more we come before you as humble as we know how. With thankful hearts, Father, that you've kept us and you've been with us and you've seen us through dangers, seen and unseen, but you've been there with us. You've been with us as we've gone through and had to buried loved ones, Father. You've been with us as we've gone through the hospitals and the nursing centers, Father. You, you've been with us. So we thank you, Father, that you've been able to hold to us, Father, and keep us in your hand, Father. Now, Father, as we come this day to worship you, we pray that your spirit would rest and rule in this place, Father that we might be able to feel your presence, Father. So we pray that your Holy Spirit just fall fresh on us right now, that we might be able to sing and pray and give your name glory and honor, Father. And while we're praying, Father, we're praying for those that are bereaved right now, Father, for the Holy Family and for all those attached to them, Father, that you would be with them in this hour, Father, and let them know that earth has no sorrow, that heaven cannot heal. Father, we, we're thankful and we're, pr we're praying now for those in leadership over us that you would touch them in a special way. Give them insights into your will and your way, Father, that we might live a peaceful life, Father. Thank you, Father, for this day. We give you glory and honor. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. We're going to have Eric come back with another song. we have the announcements by Sister Charlotte. And then another song. We're going to work him today, but he's also going to work you. Amen. So he's going to want you to sing along with him. Amen. 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 And for those who like to get to the scripture early, we're going to Mark chapter 7. Mark chapter 7 today, verses 24 through 30. Mark chapter 7, verses 24 through 30. For a title, I've chosen Collateral Blessing. Collateral blessing. We've often heard of collateral damage, but we want to talk about collateral blessing. Amen. This one is not in your hymn books, but it is a very familiar song. Since we are in resurrection month, mm -hmm. if you will, I think it's the third Sunday, if I'm not mistaken. Mm -hmm. Let's go ahead and tell somebody about Jesus rose with all power in his hands. It's, um, the, the course of it is very easy. Jesus rose with all power in his hand. Jesus rose with all power in his hand. He died one Friday evening. He rose one Sunday morning. Jesus rose with all power in his hand. All right. Yeah. Hey. 
Sunday in April. Yes. To our visitors, on behalf of Reverend Wayne Johnson and the Silo Missionary Baptist Church family, we extend a heartfelt welcome to you and we hope you come back and worship with us again. Please keep the sick and shut-in members in your prayers. Heartfelt sympathy goes out to the family of Ms. Jeanette McGee Bailey. Please keep the family in your thoughts and prayers. Jeanette is the sister of Rita Cooper and Lisa Hawley, and she's also my niece. Her funeral will be held here tomorrow with vis visitation started at 12 noon, and the funeral will be at 1 o'clock. The announcements are as follows. There will be a deacon and trustee meeting immediately after service today in the basement. The next Zoom meeting will be held on Wednesday, April 6th at 7 p.m. Thank you very much. In a perfect time to thank, it's a perfect time to thank you for the nice things that you do and a perfect time to let you know your thought the world up to Sarah Venable. Do we have anyone celebrating birthdays or anniversaries from last Monday through today? If so, would you please stand? And Tabitha, you have to stand since you weren't here. <laughs> when was your birthday? The 21st? Was it? Okay, Tabitha had a birthday on the 21st. Any other birthdays or anniversaries? God continue to guide and bless you. And I'll leave you with the thought for today. I pulled it off of Reverend Logan's uh, Facebook page. And he sa it said, God gave some of us a triple bypass this morning. We bypassed the hospital, the morgue, and the cemetery. Amen. Glory be to God. This will conclude the announcements for this morning. Thank you. Thank you for those announcements. We pray that you govern yourselves accordingly and that we are be active in keeping up with our people that we have and uh, be in prayer for those that are sick among us. The uh, church family um, is in prayer for the holy family loss this morning and we pray that um, we're able to give some comfort tomorrow as they come to uh, funeralize their sister, daughter, cousin. I was trying to think it was, it was something I, I, it seemed like I've lost it completely out of my head now, but um, we ask that you just keep those things in mind. Um, also, just to, to re-emphasize re re the deacon trustee meeting downstairs after service today. The, uh, Eric is going to give us another selection. We'll be going to Mark chapter 7, verses 24 through 30, after the next song.
chapter 7 starting at verse 24 through 30 and from thence he arose and went into the borders of Tyre and Sidon and entered into a house and would have no man know it but he could not be hid for a certain woman whose young daughter had an unclean spirit heard of him and came and fell at his feet. The woman was a Greek, a Seraphonician by nation, and she besought him that he would cast forth the devil out of her daughter. But Jesus said unto her, let the children first be filled, for it is not meet to take the children's bread and to cast it unto the dogs. And she answered and said unto him, yes, Lord, Yet the dogs under the table eat of the children's crumbs. And he said unto her, For this saying, go thy way. The devil is gone out of your daughter. And when she was come to her house, she found the devil gone out, and her daughter laid upon the bed. Amen. You may be seated. Collateral blessing. Father, time for your word to be preached. We pray that you fill this vessel one more time that I might speak your truth, that we might find a nugget of truth here, Father, that we can apply to our lives, that we might be better citizens of the kingdom. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Collateral blessing. In the times we're living in, we're always hearing of collateral damage. Collateral damage is when the innocents are hurt from the shelling of the enemy or from gunfire, from a drive-by shooting. It's someone who was hit, but not on purpose, but because of where they were. Some people say the wrong place at the wrong time, that they became collateral damage. And I thought about that as I was reading these verses of scripture. When this woman found out where Jesus was, 
You see, Jesus had already been healing all in that area. And she had a daughter who was possessed by a devil, a demon, and she heard that Jesus was a healer. And she came seeking him out. But if you remember, Jesus said he came to the Jews. So when he said that it's not good to give the children's bread to the dogs, he was basically saying, I came for the Jews first, but that does not mean I didn't come for you, but I came for them first. And she said, but even the dogs eat from under the table, eat the crumbs. And it made me think about how little children eat. Have you ever watched a, a baby eat food? They're some of the messiest eaters you want to see. They have food dripping everywhere. And if you have carpet under your table, you'll have a stained carpet. But here, he's saying that in this verse of scripture, that even the dogs lay under the table expecting an overflow. And it made me think about the blessings of heaven. When we're around someone who's being blessed, we ought to expect overflow. I want to be around somebody who's being blessed because when God blesses, it's always an overflow. I, it made me think about when I was a little baby, little boy, my first drink of coffee was in my mother's lap and she had the cup and the saucer and I got the coffee from the saucer, the overflow. And that's where I'm thinking about this blessing that when God starts to blessing us, I want to be around people who are being blessed because they're going to get an overflow. Amen. And I want to be able to stick my cup under the overflow. You know, I don't have to have my own personal blessing. I want to catch some of your overflow. Amen. But it made me think. This morning when I got up, you know, I hit my little news network on my phone. And the first thing I see, I think it's out west somewhere, 15 people were shot. Six died. And I thought about it. I said, they were at the wrong place at the wrong time. How much more would it be better to be at the right place at the right time? I want to be where blessings are flowing. But we're living in a time now where people want to be where they want to be. They're not thinking about God anymore. They're thinking about the flesh and what I can do to make myself feel good. I was telling the Sunday school, we got the, 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 the March Madness going on and everybody want to be in New Orleans or at some uh, uh, basketball party. But see, when you open the doors to any and everybody, you don't know who comes in. So you could be collateral damage. I was reading a story, article about people were having a birthday party and somebody came to the party who wasn't invited. And when they got put out, they come back. Collateral damage is done. Because we don't know everybody around us. But we as believers ought to be around like-minded believers. And when we're out among unbelievers, we ought to be spreading the word of God of peace and grace and mercy so that people won't be all inflamed with the passions of this life. being at the right place at the right time. This woman had heard of Jesus and she made her way from the coast into the city and she found out where he was. Now think about this now. She's Greek of the Seraphonician area, but she made her way to a Jew. Now these were people who didn't have all this interaction. But she heard something about this man, that this man was healing, this man was feeding the hungry, this man was giving sight to the blind. And she had an issue. Her issue was her daughter was sick. You see, sometimes when something strikes at home with us, we 
need to go to the one who can fix it. Amen. You know, sometimes we can go to our best friend and tell them about it, but it ain't nothing they can do. Amen. We need to go to the one who can deliver us. Yes. This woman came to Jesus and she asked him to do a miracle in her life. And he said, because of your faith, because you think that you can make it off of the crumbs, I'm going to give you what you want. You see, sometimes people want the big thing. I, I, I need a big miracle. But she said, if I can just have the crumbs from the table, that'll be enough for me. And that's what we need to be about. I don't have to have it all. I just want the crumbs. And if you just give me the crumbs, I can make it another day. I want that collateral blessing. I, I don't have to be the, the main object of your blessing right now. You see, but in order for me to be the have the collateral blessing, I got to be around somebody who wants to be blessed. You got to want it. Some people just satisfied saying, well, I'm just going to wait. No, I want somebody to say, Lord, Lord, I need this blessing. <laughs> and when I, when two or three gather in his name, you got two or three people saying, I need that blessing. Then he'll bless. But we got to be willing and able to call on him. It says the woman left. And as she got home, the devil was gone. And her daughter laid on the bed. So I'm telling you, when you when you start walking with Jesus, you don't may, you may not see it right then and there, but you've got to keep on walking. You've got to keep on believing. You've got to go on about your business, doing what God would have you to do, and He will take care of the rest. Sometimes we worry too much about other things. We got these distractions in our lives that will keep us. From looking at God. I, I, looked, I looked at part of the game last night. I know there are some disappointed people in the crowd this morning. May the Lord bless you. But at halftime, I, I turned over and went to sleep. Now, how can you go to sleep on at halftime? It's easy. I had no what they say, I had no dog in that fight. It mattered not to me whether Duke or Carolina won. It's a, it's a sporting event. But you have some people now who are so upset because their team lost. And you got some who were so excited that their team won that I saw a picture of Franklin Street. I mean, wall to wall, packed. I wish we could get them in church like that. Get so excited about God that they would pack the walls of the church. But you see, the nature of man is to be opposite of God. God is working on us to work us into his family. But see, you've got to be one who wants to be there. You've got to have that love for God in you. And God has shown himself so many times in our lives that it's on you. Somebody said something about God going to send somebody. No, he doesn't have to send anybody to hell. You send yourself. He's got the door open saying, come unto me. And you turn your back on him. Collateral blessings are available to all of us. If we stay in his hand, if we stay in his presence, if we stay around people with same kind of mindset. I thought about that when we were speaking in Sunday school about loving our brother, doing things that would help them. When I think about the church, when I think about what the church should be doing, sometimes I get concerned because we get wrapped up into the church instead of what the church should be doing to bring people to Christ. You know, we get, we get so concerned about, oh, the, the building need paint. 
or the people, people need carpet, you know. If, if we were to rip out every piece of carpet in here, it would still be church. It'd still be church. But what we ought to be concerned about, how many souls are we reaching? How many people are we personally telling about Jesus Christ? How, how many people see Christ in you? You see, if you're walking around all frowned up all the time, there, there appears to be no joy in your life. Why would people want to follow somebody who has no joy? But see, I've got this joy, the hope of glory, that God has already made a way for me. I have been forgiven, and there is no doubt in my mind that he paid the price for me. And as we walk closer and closer to Resurrection Sunday, we've been studying on Wednesday what he's done for me. And I pray that as we get closer, we'll realize all the things he's done. All, all the blessings that he's given us. It's called collateral blessings. Because it doesn't have to be directly at you. But because I'm walking the way he wants me to walk, there's blessings along the way. Every, every step I take, I see there's another blessing. That's collateral blessing. Because I'm trying my best to get closer to him. The very opposite, collateral damage, happens when we choose to be in places where the world is ruling, where the world is promoting itself. One of the things that's been on the news so much this week, y'all know what it is, the slap heard around the world. The world is into things such as this. The world feeds on anger, on hatred, and that's why it's always being brought up. But the love ought to be brought up in this. The forgiveness ought to be brought up in this. It ought to be brought up that I've made the worst mistake I've made in my life. And there's one, Denzel I think told him, once you get to a higher place, you can be aware, you got to be aware. Yeah. That's when the devil's coming after you. Yeah. Because he can use you in this, as an example. Yeah. See, he can say, see I told you he wouldn't worth anything. And that's what we as believers got to understand. Eyes are on us. We've got to walk right. We've got to talk right. We've got to live right. Yes. Yes. You see, this is not just an ordinary yes. worship. We've got to live this thing. We've got to live it. When you walk through day to day, you've got to live this thing. you got to be holy and separated under God. you got to be where God would use you at any minute. You know, I, I often think about, um, we went on vacation, my wife, uh, sorority had their convention so we went to their convention it was out in Las Vegas with all the casinos and we had a hotel room uh, and the whole, all this gambling going on and what came to my mind was if the Lord came back now and he come looking for Wayne where he finds him <laughs> matters. He, he, <laughs> I just walk through the place and I look at all these people, they just pulling on these machines and I'm like, I ain't got no money to put in no things. But the thing is, where we go, what we do, it matters. We can hang a big cross on ourselves, we can carry our Bible under our arms, but what does our life really say about us? You see, because people are watching. You know, when I'm not here in this pulpit, when I'm at the grocery store, does my life still say, okay, he's a believer. You see, that's what, it, what, that's what we really need to be about. 
Do, do we show that we believe? There ought to be some collateral blessing in that. And when we walk around, we ought to be so blessed that somebody else gets collateral blessing. They ought to be welcoming you in. Come on in here, because I know God is with you. And if he's with you, there's got to be a blessing around you somewhere. I want, I want people around me like that. I don't want people around me that doesn't know God. And if they're around me, they're going to have to hear about him. Because that's the blessing. To bless them to know my God. So today, do you know him enough to spread the blessing? You see, sometimes we got to be sure that when God is blessing, we hold our hands out open and that we're not trying to just grab it to ourselves. We ought to let it flow through us to others around us so that God can bless those around us. That's the collateral blessing. I want to be a blessing to those around me. And if I'm a blessing to those around me, then I won't have to worry about my children or my children's children. I want them to be surrounded by people that I'm surrounded by. Yes. And we're all agreeing that God is good. Yes. Collateral blessing. Today, if there's one who doesn't know Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior, you can come give me your hand, but I definitely want you to give him your heart. Yes. You know, we, 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 often, we often think about tying ourselves to a church but I want you to tie yourself to God I want you to be with God and in God and doing all that you can because of God because you can't depend on man I'm only a man I, man makes mistakes so don't look at this vessel here and think that it's so special. I'm just a man. But when we get together and we talk about the goodness of God and let God fill the vessel, then we can really have the blessing from God. We can say, isn't it good that we came together because God was in the midst. In the midst. Amen. God bless you. May his face shine upon you. Eric's going to give us a final selection. Collateral blessing. I want to be where the blessings are. Amen. Amen. This song is in your hymn book. Page um, 147. Nothing but the blood of Jesus.
nothing but the blood as we move on towards Resurrection Sunday. We pray that you will keep the thoughts and minds on Christ, what he's done for us through shedding his blood on Calvary's cross. As we prepare to leave this place, I ask you to keep those on our sick list in your prayers and those who are bereaved. Let us stand together as we close out. Father, we thank you for this another day and for this opportunity to be in your presence. We pray now, Father, that everything was done decent and in order and pleasing in your sight. And as we prepare to leave this place, Father, we ask for traveling grace and mercy upon these, your people. Lead and guide them and keep them in your care. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. amen. Now unto him who is able to keep you from falling, his love, his joy, go with you henceforth now and forever. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. God bless you. <laughs>